out. <laughs> he doesn't move very much. Rabbit stew, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. I don't care how cute you think you are. He's perfect. You're gonna go in the pot with some taters and carrots. No. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so I have a prized apple tree in my yard. You guys can check out the uh, the link that I put up there at the or at the end. Uh, all the apple, uh, all the all, all the fruit trees I have in my yard. Every tree that I have in my yard, I want to produce fruit. Well, this apple tree is was my prize. It is my my prized apple tree. My daughter, and while she was in uh, was it high school, honey? Yeah. So while she was in high school, had a bunny rabbit. You guys have seen the little bunny here, right? Yeah, that's my uh, that's that's my son's girlfriend's bunny. We use her for props. <laughs> my daughter's bunny was running around free in the backyard. And if anybody knows anything about rabbits, they love apple and pear branches. Matter of fact, they sell them at the local pet store. Little bags of cut apple branches. They like to eat the bark off of it. Well, my daughter left the bunny out here in the yard unattended one day and I came out and it had stripped off the bark off of half of my tree. Check out these pictures. You can check out, look at the wound on that tree. You'll see where the bark is missing. So this happened about, oh, probably seven, eight years ago. My tree has totally, totally survived. Here, I'll show it to you right now. So there's my tree right there. You can see how big it is. So this tree totally survived. It had stripped off the bark from about half of the of the trunk, and so I, I was I was I was pissed. <laughs> we almost had rabbit stew that night. I was so upset. Oh, look how cute! How cute he'll be in my stew pot. So somebody had had mentioned something about saving a tree that had been debarked or girdled or whatnot. And, it, and so I Googled it, and sure enough, there was a technique for bridging the wound area with its own branches and basically grafting them in and making a bridge over the wound area so that the nutrients, uh, the, 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 uh, the liquids and all that, that that move in trees move right underneath the bark, okay? They don't move through the wood in the center, they move right underneath the bark. So if you strip off the bark, there's no way for those nutrients and for the water to reach the top of the tree. Okay, so you have to make a bridge. Well, luckily, the rabbit had only eaten about half the bark off, off of uh, uh, the tree. It didn't go all the way around. So I bridged the wound area. And so check out these pictures. You guys can see there's only one of the, uh, the bridges left. It's been like seven years since I did it, but it totally worked and saved my tree. And this tree continues to produce beautifully, beautifully today. And you can see from the wound area that it actually healed most of the wound around there. There's still that bare spot in the very, very middle, but it definitely healed enough that the tree did not die and it continues to produce beautiful apples today. So anyway, check this out. I'm gonna show you a technique real quick here, what I did, and uh, we'll get some close-ups of, of, um, of where I put the little graphs and the bridges. And if you guys ever have, I have some friends up in Idaho who were talking about the deer up there stripping the bark off of their fruit trees and their orchards up there. So if you guys, uh, anywhere that you have an orchard and you have problems with the deer and you have a tree that you weren't able to you know, keep safe and something came and stripped off some of the bark, if it's a large enough tree at least, uh, there's a good chance you can, you can save that tree by bridging that wound with branches and continuing the, the flow of nutrients and, and liquids to the top of the tree. So uh, check this out. Okay, so I showed you guys a picture. This is some of the close-ups there. Um, you can see where the wound area is uh, is on this tree. It had actually formed in this area a new skin, like a thin bark layer. Here's the original bark, and here's some original bark. This is new bark that the tree formed over the wound area. But right here, you can see like some some warty stuff. That was the tree trying to form some bark over itself but it never succeeded. So this is actually raw wood right here. So this wound never healed. It did kind of heal itself here, okay? 
So you can see the stick right here. This is part of my bridge. And then right here, you can see my cuts where I used a razor blade and I lifted up the bark. And you can see the remnants of the stick that's left in there. And here's another remnant of another piece of stick as well as this stick sticking out. And here's another bridge that I had made right here with two cuts. And there was a bridge, uh, a piece of stick right there as well. Um, so let me show you what I, how I did that. So you base, you take a branch, its own tree branch, and you strip off the leaves. Okay. You cut this at an angle, like so. Now it's better to use with a knife. You want a nice, clean, sharp cut. These cutters are not very good, but for sake of uh, demonstration, I'll show you guys. So you, you have an angled cut like this, not, not straight across, but at an angle. And in the bottom, you do the opposite, like so, okay? Now you're gonna take this piece right here. Actually, I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter. Oops, I almost did the wrong way. Okay, so there's my, there's my bridge, guys. All right, so what I did, is about every two inches is I took a razor blade and I make, made two slices in the bark and then I gently peeled back that bark and lifted up, lifted up the bark and I stuck this branch underneath the bark. Okay, so let's just try. Here's, here's a good spot here. Okay, so you guys can see I stuck that branch underneath the bark and then I took a nail, a little tiny nail, and I tacked it in there to hold it in place. And I did the same thing at the bottom where there was some where there was still some good bark. Okay? So that in effect is the bridge bridging the wound where the bark was peeled away by that that evil little varmint rabbit. Now as you can see, this was seven years ago. This tree did just fine. So my bridging totally worked. If not, if I hadn't done that, there's a good chance that some of this tree, part of it would have died. Some of it might have survived, but it, it might it, it was it definitely would have shocked it. But that year that uh, the year that that, uh, that I had done that bridging to try and save this tree, we had a full harvest. It, it didn't even miss a beat. So if you have more than I think two thirds or three quarters of a tree, what they call girdled. That, that'll kill a tree completely because there's no transference of nutrients and, and, and liquid to the top of the tree as it flows underneath the bark. So if you, if you basically break that passageway underneath the bark all the way around the tree, it can't get anything to the top of the tree, you'll kill a tree. So this is a way to save it, guys. Um, here's the proof seven years later and that rabbit uh, escaped with another life. So thanks for watching. If you guys liked it, you guys have any comments leave a comment hit that thumbs up share this um, if, 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 if I said anything that you don't agree with please leave a comment in the bottom and, and let me know uh, otherwise this was something that was a it was a proven technique that I found online and I got a chance to use it and it totally worked and now we have awesome apple pie filling because of it so thanks for watching guys evil evil animal Oh, look how cute.